the first Sony PlayStation has some amazing games, and some of those games are only physical on the PlayStation, and meaning 30 years later, they're quite expensive. And the past two years during the great collecting boom, some of those games quadrupled in value. But as we approach 2023, the prices have settled. But will they finally drop? Welcome to Retronomics, the series that follows price trends in video games. And today, we're taking a look at 22 PlayStation 1 games to see if the prices will go up, down, or stay the same. I get all of my prices from PriceCharting.com, and I take a look at eBay sold listings and what's available for sale to give you a forecast on each title. All of the titles in this video are North American copies and complete inbox prices. Prices are accurate as of the date listed in the description, but before we get into the game prices, let's take a look at some overall stats. There are 1,661 items listed on PriceCharting.com, and this includes everything, even the memory cards and the variants. I tried to weed out stuff like the homebrew and the one-off Nintendo PlayStation, but there are still a lot of things to consider. And out of all of those items, 91 items are over $100, 147 are from $50 to $100, 383 are from $20 to $50, and 1,040 are under $20. To put that in perspective, this time in 2021, there were 89 items over $100, 149 between $50 and $100, 366 between $20 and $50, and 1,057 under $20. So not a significant change year over year. Most of the change happened in the under $20 category where they either just creeped up from $19.99 to $20 or like high octane jumped from $18 to over $130. So why is that the case? Well, it is the case. Specifically, this version of high octane is in a jewel case. And when PlayStation first came out, some of the games came in long cardboard boxes, then long jewel cases similar to the Sega Saturn, and then the CD jewel cases that we're most familiar with. Most of the games that rose significantly in value from December 2021 to now are long box or some kind of variant. So something to consider when looking to what impacts the prices. Klonoa loses its spot as the most expensive PlayStation game, but the misadventures of Tron Bond has reclaimed its spot. So with that out of the way, let's take a look at some individual games. Ayn Honda is a fantastic exclusive PlayStation game, and it also happens to be a shoot 'em up from the 90s as well, so it's going to fetch a high dollar amount. The price does seem to be settling down with a handful of copies selling for under $100, although that does seem to be the exception to the rule. I think that the current price is where we're going to see Ayn Honda for the future, especially with the way that Sony is handling their PS1 back catalog now. Final Fantasy VII hasn't really changed in price from my last video. It is one of the best-selling games of all time, so it's not surprising that we're seeing copies sold for less than $30 at times. If you are considering collecting for the PlayStation 1 and you like RPGs, the Final Fantasy VII is a great buy at this price. Tactics Ogre is an RPG on the PlayStation published by Atlas. It's also a port of a Super Nintendo game by the same name, which was later remastered for the PlayStation Portable. Now you can get Tactics Ogre Reborn physically on the Switch, which is a remastered version of the PlayStation Portable version. Are you with me so far? Anyway, after the release of Reborn on modern consoles, the price of Tactics Ogre for the PlayStation has plummeted 30% from August just four months ago. Still, it's expensive and the price is actually on the rebound, so maybe consider getting it now before the price creeps back up. Parasite Eve is Square's first M-rated game, and people have been wanting a remake of this game for a while, and I don't think that it's going to happen just yet, if at all. The good news is, is that the price has remained fairly consistent over the past year or so. A couple of outliers that are going for above price charting's price are mentioning that the registration card and the bonus disc are included, so keep that in mind if those things are important to you. 
I don't think that the price is going to spike much in the next year or so, so buy it now or wait. Toba is a game that has such a cult following, and it's one game that will remain around its current value for here on out. It's odd because I do remember seeing commercials for this game when it was new, and usually the games that are expensive now are the ones that barely got any coverage. Pretty weird. There are some copies available in Canada for not too much money, but some of those have hidden shipping fees, so buy with caution. Diablo is a port of the super popular PC title, and it's just over the price it was at the start of the pandemic. It's one of the few games that have actually done that. Usually when a game goes for $100, it rarely drops below that, but not with Diablo. Maybe because it's only the first Diablo and a lot of people prefer the second one? While there are no current copies for around the price charting price listed on eBay, there are tons that are available, which which suggests that if you wait a bit, you might find a reasonable price copy. Castlevania Symphony of the Night is considered the best Castlevania and the game that coined the phrase Metroidvania. While available digitally and physically on modern platforms, there are a lot of people who have insisted that those ports aren't as accurate as the PlayStation 1 version. The price of this game will remain above $100 with a couple sneaking through below that. I think that you can absolutely afford to wait just a bit to find a copy at the price that you're comfortable with, as for the last 6 months the price has fluctuated only about $10 or so. Silent Hill is looking like it will <clears throat> Silent Hill is looking like it will remain high for the foreseeable future. It's still a popular franchise and every so often there's rumors that a remake will be made and surprise there was a remake announced of Silent Hill 2 along with the new entry to the series and honestly the first game is pretty rough for the asking price but hey people are still buying it for the price. This is the first game on the list that still has a strong price trend even after the gaming price boom. I do think that the price will come down back a bit, but this will be one where we remember the fond times of it being only $30. Xenogears is the first game in a long series of games with the latest being Xenoblade Chronicles 3. The price has fallen off a steep cliff since September because a handful of copies sold for well below $100. There are still copies available on eBay for way more than what price charting has it listed for, so I would consider waiting around to see if a price that you're comfortable with pops up. The price might fluctuate a couple of dollars in the next couple of months, but I don't think that we'll see a spike anytime soon. Suikoden 2 is an RPG for the PlayStation, so it's going to be expensive, but Konami was paying attention and they have finally announced remasters for Suikoden 1 and 2 that are due out sometime in 2023. And best of all, it looks like Konami tweaked it only slightly instead of going full Final Fantasy 7 Remake. The price was dropping a bit before the announcement in September, but don't expect this game to drop catastrophically. This game has has been selling for $100 or more for more than a decade and I will be surprised if we see it drop below $200, much less $100. Klonoa is another beloved game for the PlayStation and it's been dropping in price because it got a re-release. Too bad it's not physical in North America. The price history of Klonoa is wild. Some copies go for $275 and then the next day they go for $500. So I think that it's safe to say that the remake didn't really make a dent that people were hoping for. Honestly, this is one of the hard to get games for a reasonable price, so maybe save up while you're playing the re-release on the Nintendo Switch or platform of your choice. R-Type Delta is the first 3D entry of the popular shoot 'em up series and last year I didn't think that we'd see copies sell for less than $200. Well, I was wrong. Eventually. It did take 11 months for the price to drop below $200 and now we might actually see it drop below $100. There are copies selling for below what it was going for prior to the pandemic. 
Currently, no copies are available for around what price charting has it listed for, but I'm sure that we'll see some pop up for that price, so just be patient. Alundra has remained around the same price for the past year with a couple of bumps and dips. It is a working designs title and the person who owns the rights to these games wants way too much money to re-release them. So I do think that it will be a long time before anyone ponies up to dough to bring these games to modern consoles. But then again, these titles all had premium materials and I don't think that we'll even see that in modern physical releases. So keep an eye out for a price that you're comfortable with. Because because it'll be expensive. But one working design game that isn't expensive is Raystorm, and this is a shoot 'em up similar to Darius and Einhander. And while there were spikes above $100 for the past two years, there are still some complete in box copies in decent condition listed for under $100. Honestly, it might be worth it to pick it up now, or at the very least, keep an eye out to see if it returns to pre pandemic pricing. Intelligent Cube will continue to bounce between $50 and $60 for the foreseeable future. It's a puzzle game which isn't as hip nowadays, so I don't think that we'll see it really pop off in value anytime soon. In fact, this is one game that didn't really see a significant price increase in the past two years like some of the other games on this list, so I'd pick it up now or wait. Metal Gear Solid continues the bounce between $30 and $40 with a long box split up from the Essentials Collection selling for $70. There are some listed for higher, but condition is a factor here so people are paying a premium for that. If you don't mind gently used discs and a banged up jewel case which can easily be replaced, you can find one for cheaper. Given the price trend for the past two years, I do think that it's safe to say that the price won't be fluctuating for now. Crash Bandicoot is one game that has increased a lot since my last video and it now seems to be just staying there, perhaps because of the rumors that there was going to be a sequel to Crash Bandicoot 4. We didn't get a Crash 5 announcement, instead we got a team shooter, which okay I guess, you can't have too many of those. So I don't think that there will be a Crash Bandicoot crash because I don't see too many black label copies for sale on eBay and that could be one of the reasons why we're seeing an increase in the first place. It's a good game but maybe consider the remastered trilogy on modern consoles instead. I'd wait on this one. Strider 2 didn't have a meteoric rise as the other titles on this list, but that doesn't mean that it isn't expensive. Almost doubling in price over the past two years, Strider 2, the sequel to the popular Capcom arcade game, will most likely remain around the current price for the foreseeable future. Especially when complete copies that are listed for on eBay are priced north of $150. I don't think that the price will spike since Capcom doesn't seem to be doing anything with the franchise, but I keep an eye on it. Sometimes these games tend to just explode in value over time. Relevations Persona is the first game in the famous Persona series, so it's going to fetch a high dollar amount. It's been around $400 for months and it doesn't look like it's going to drop significantly anytime soon. Some goober even sold a WADA graded copy. Some copies do sell for significantly less if they have open bidding, so maybe keep an eye out for one and you might get lucky. Just don't expect this to be cheap ever again unless a Switch physical of the re-release comes out, which is just as unlikely. Shadow Tower is a title by From Software, and with the mainstream success of Elden Ring and other Souls-like games, their back catalog has seen a significant jump in price, especially since the pandemic started. Prior to that, this game has been around $100, so it's not really surprising that the, a considerably rare game has now quadrupled in price over the past two years. This game does seem to be least likely to ever get a re-release or remake. Some games are destined to just be lost to time, but at least it's still on the PlayStation Store for now. Echo Knight is a late PlayStation title with an obscure cover. This title is dropping in price from its peak of $220 in May of this year. Again, open bids are starting to come up, which gives a better true indication of what the market price will allow, meaning that buy it now is inflated. 
The Japanese copy is dirt cheap compared to the North American copy, which really indicates how reliant this game is on text. I know that JRPGs like Chrono Trigger for the Super Nintendo are cheaper on the Famicom in Japan for that very reason. The Misadventures of Tron Bon is part of the Mega Man Legend series and it's a late life cycle game and it's just one of those games that has been sought after by collectors for a while. While price charting does show that the price is dropping, that could be affected by a couple of erroneous listings that the site picked up, which were only the disc or missing them artwork. The cheapest copy as of the recording of this video is missing the demo disc and the main disc is scratched up, but it still plays. So keep that in mind because if I'm going to drop that much money on a game, it's got to be in the best shape as possible and come with all the goodies. So as you can see, PlayStation games on a whole are starting to level out with some even dropping to the price that they were before the pandemic started, or at least within the margin of error. While it's still too early to tell if prices will fall further, I do think it's safe to say that the great pandemic price boom is officially over. I am planning on talking specifically about those two years and what I think we can expect for 2023, so stay tuned for that. But let me know what you think. Will PlayStation prices drop to pre-pandemic levels or is this the calm before the storm? Leave a comment below and if you like this video, give it a like and share it with those who might find it interesting. And if you're new here and like Retronomic episodes, consider subscribing for future content. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at Snicktendo. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Super Nintendo, and I'll see you next time.